Hi everyone and welcome to Seller App's live stream. I'm Ria Mittal and I work as a product evangelist at Seller App and we are trying to make this a Monday thing like Monday webinar. So this is where we come every Monday and talk about um, how we can how you can excel on Amazon and how we can help you excel on Amazon. We talk about topics which are brand new. So today we are going to talk about reimbursements. We're going to talk about feedbacks and we're going to talk about reviews. And if you're wondering uh, why we chose this topic, most of our sellers that I've spoken to recently have gotten increased feedbacks, reviews and returns because of Q4, which was Christmas and Q1. So this is a time period where sellers receive most amount of feedbacks and reviews. And um, you know, a lot of um, orders get um, taken back by Amazon as well. So we have Yoni Mazur here uh, with us today, who is our reimbursement specialist. And he works for Getaida, and they get you all your money back um, if you are getting reimbursed not rightly by Amazon. So for those of you watching right now, hi, I'm Ria Mittal, and welcome to Seller Apps live stream, where we talk about important things on Amazon and give you updates that can help you um, make your journey a little bit more easier on Amazon. If you want this to be a Monday thing, like Monday webinars with Seller App, let us know and we can totally do that. Let me know in the chat box below what um, you know what topics you would like to see um, Monday webinars on. I'm sure you all love Mekla. Mekla would love to join. Yoni is here with us today and we can get so many more people because you learn from sellers and these people are experts in their field and were sellers at a point of time. It helps quite a lot. So yes, before I move forward uh, with the session, um, Yoni is going to cover reimbursements. I'm going to cover reviews and feedbacks. If you have any questions, leave them in the chat box below and we will answer all of them for you. So yes, let's talk about, hi, Jesse. So let's talk about reviews. So you know, reviews are really important. The statistics show that if you have um, good reviews, 84% of the customers look at reviews when they're buying products. So if you have good reviews, you know that you're gonna um, make more and convert more on Amazon. But since there have been increased feedback and Amazon has gotten really um, complicated with getting their reviews removed, um, it's, it's a lot of hassle. So I'm here to help you understand what happens when you get a negative review. So of course, keeping a 100% score on Amazon is not possible and Amazon has um, made new policies which makes getting reviews um, removed uh, quite tougher. You can obviously go ahead and download these free apps that let you, um, you know, uh, this like review checkers and stuff that will help you get your reviews uh, checked and they will also help you make sure that you're getting reviews which are um, legit because a lot of competitors just like posting negative reviews on each other's listing. It has gotten really complicated. So let me tell you what happens if you get a negative review and how you can get it removed. So first thing that you need to do is take action um, fastly. So if you have, fastly is not a word. So when you get um, a negative review, you need to make sure that you act on it quickly. So let's see um, what you can do. First, these are Amazon policies, yeah? So the first thing is the feedback includes personal identif identifiable information. If your feedback, negative feedback, um, contains that, you can definitely write back to Amazon and they will uh, remove the review. A word of caution here right now, you need to understand that Amazon gets a lot of requests. So make sure your email and the message that you're writing to them is very short and brief. They do not want to hear the whole story, what happened. Just tell them, hey, I got a negative review and it includes personal identifiable information of the seller or the person who's bought it and they will remove it for you. Also, um, this information is from Feedback Advisor. So thank you for giving us this information. Second, if the entire feedback comment is about a product review, you can get that review removed. Again, write it to Amazon customer support. They will help you out immediately. Third is the entire feedback comment is regarding fulfillment or customer service for an order fulfilled by Amazon. So of course, um, that is not your uh, fault when it comes to FBA fulfilled by Amazon or a customer service that the buyer experienced with Amazon. So you can get your review, uh, review um, negative review removed. So yeah, these are the things that you can follow to get your um, review removed. If you have any more questions, we have Colleen from Ecom Engine who will be joining us in the later sessions. Colleen, if you're watching this right now, I'm very excited for a session. So yes, yeah, she will be joining us in the future. And you can leave or you can think of questions. You can come up with case studies and she will answer those for you. So yes, that was all that I had to talk about Amazon's reviews. And of course, now that early review program is no longer uh, something that Amazon is uh, providing you, uh, we have buying program. And if you have any more questions related to the review programs, let us know in the comment section below and I will get back to it later. 
All right, so let me introduce Yoni. Yoni Mazor is from Gataida and he will be talking about Amazon reimbursements. He has been with us multiple times and um, he, you guys love him because he helps you get so much of your money uh, back. And of course, making profits on Amazon is one of the things that people look forward to. And with Amazon fees, um, selling on Amazon is already so expensive. So let's welcome Yoni and let's see what he has to say about Amazon reimbursements. Hi, Yoni. Oh, wait, we can't hear you yet. Is there something wrong with your mic? Hey, Ria, how are you? Yeah, I guess I'm in the waiting room. I put me uh, on mute. Do you hear me now? Yes, I hear you now. Hi, Yoni. Thank you so much for being here with us today. My pleasure. Glad to be here. And um, yeah, so I have been dealing with so many sellers recently who have been giving me questions. And I was like, I'm going to collect them all and throw it at Yoni today. So I have so many questions to ask you. Uh, starting with, why is reimbursement important for Amazon sellers? Of course, um, Amazon is consumer-centric, but why do you think uh, re reimbursements by Amazon have become so tacky that Gitaida is has come to help them, and how do you help them? Uh, first, I would like you to introduce yourselves, because for new, new, new viewers, we would like um, them to know who Yoni is. Go ahead. Got it. Okay, so I'll start with uh, a little bit about ourselves, and then I'll hopefully I'll try to touch on the question. Uh, but I think so, which, by introducing myself, I'll, I'll probably also answer a few, uh, you know, components of the question. So, uh, you know, Getira, we're essentially we're a technology company, and our claim to fame is our ability to help Amazon sellers get the maximum FBA reimbursements that they're eligible to receive. Um, we're not a software, and we're not a tool. We're a solution. As a solution, we use software, but we also use a dedicated team. We have a team of uh, claim specialists that basically um, work on your behalf. Because once we find the problem, we're going to open cases and manage all the back and forth. Until you get the reimbursement, I get you know until you get the resolution. But uh, as for your question, Ria, uh, uh, statistically speaking, we found out that the discrepancy rate on FBA uh, can range between one to three percent from your annual sales. So let's say you do a million dollars on Amazon FBA, uh, you know inside your in, inside your uh, transactions, maybe ten to thirty thousand dollars might be uh, you know possible for you to recover because maybe some of your inventory got lost, damaged, destroyed disappeared, disposed, got charged with all these fulfillment fees. So we look into all these types of variations of issues that you know sellers experience with the inventory uh, inside Amazon's fulfillment center. Uh, and once we find it, uh, we make sure we get the recovery. Uh, you know, if you do a million dollars, 10 to 30,000, if you're doing 100,000, it could be one to $3,000. Uh, it's yours to collect, but you need to make the effort to identify the problems and then open cases with Amazon and get yourself recovered. Uh, if it's too much for you, it's too confusing, stuff like that, there's solutions out there to help with this. It happens to be that Getira were one of them, and we'll be happy to help anybody that comes our way. But um, the, the the nice thing about reimbursements is that uh, we, we advocate uh, getting everything you're eligible to get, right? Because if you're an Amazon seller, you're not getting everything you're eligible to get, you lose two things. The first thing you lose is your uh, investment, the money invested into the inventory, right? You're a businessman, you're an entrepreneur, you invest into your product, you want to you know, you want to grow your business, you lost that. But the second thing you lose is uh, very interesting. You lose your profit. And why? Because when Amazon provides uh, an FBM reimbursement, they actually pay you the retail value of the product, of the unit, as if you sold it on Amazon, right? So by basically, get, by getting all the reimbursement that you're eligible to get, you're shifting a double negative momentum into a double positive momentum where you're getting your money back and all the profit. So that is why kind of we see, uh, you know, reimbursement being a very, very positive, you know, uh, indicator or, or uh, an agent that can create a good impact to your business. Because once you get all your money back and all that money you never expected to have anyways comes back to your organization, then you use that money to keep fueling your growth, right? You can uh, invest more into your next product launch. Or maybe inv invest a little bit more into your uh, PPC campaign, your marketing campaign, or maybe uh, opt into another, so you know, to a, a, a good software tool that can help you to optimize everything that you're doing at Amazon. So reduce all these costs, right? So uh, essentially by getting your money back from the dead, money you never expected to have, you take it and you invest in yourself and your business to keep it keep it pushing and growing. So that's kind of the elements there in a nutshell. Thank you so much for answering that, um, Yoni. And I have another question. So have you seen an increase in reimbursements recently in Q4 and Q1? Because in my experience, a lot of sellers have been coming and telling me that they're getting a lot of return orders. And why do you think that is happening? Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty straightforward. You know, it's it's a season. You know, Q4 is the most busiest season, and it's all statistical. If we find one to three percent discrepancy in the transactions in the Q4, most sellers have the the highest level of transactions. So there's always that spike, and then it goes still into January because um, you know, at least in the United States, you have Christmas, and you know, a lot of people and consumers they get their uh, products and their uh, gifts 
that they get. And uh, not all of them like it. They want to exchange it. They want to return it, whatever it is. So we got, um, they call it, I, I think, unboxing day when they, they, they got, they, they, they buy, yeah. they'll put all the boxes in there you know, around the Christmas tree and everything. And then they got to unbox it and then uh, send it back to Amazon. So, uh, you know, all these waves of transactions and all these headaches, we can come in and reconcile and make sure that anything that you're eligible to get reimbursement for, well, you know, you'll, you'll get coverage. Yeah, and I can clearly see that happening. So I'm glad that we have you here who can help sellers out there um, make the most out of their Amazon selling journey and not get stuck up in the reimbursement sector. So yes, and another question that I have for you, I'm sorry that I'm asking so many questions. You yeah, guys as much as you to... need, the, the more the merrier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you guys have any more questions, you can let them let me know in the comment section below. Shoot your questions now. So uh, yes, Yoni. What do, you, what do we do when it comes to, let's say, clothing items? Because I have seen a lot of people put, like, if they're not sure about their size, we put, like, blah, 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 a small, medium, maybe a large, maybe a small, and that all goes in the cap bag. And then we try on three sizes, and then we send the two that did not fit us. What can one do in that condition? Because Amazon yeah. charges a reimbursement fee, right? Uh, restocking and return fee, yeah. That can mm -hmm. really uh, put a drain into your margin, into your profitability. I think I do believe they, they call it uh, Amazon wardrobe or FBA uh, no it's Prime wardrobe Amazon Prime wardrobe <clears throat> I actually use it for myself to be honest okay. I, I'll tell you I'll, I'll take an example for myself a few months ago I think I ordered about six boots I need new boots it's corona days I'm not too excited to go into any any physical stores so I was able to shop on Amazon and choose six boots Amazon did not charge me a penny not even one dollar right. uh, I got all the six boots into my house very comfortable in my house. I open it. I put my favorite jeans, my favorite outfits. I can check it, try it, show my wife, show my kids. I can show anybody uh, on Zoom, whatever it is, and, and pick my favorite one. So I think I believe I kept two of them. Yeah, on Zoom, right? You put Zoom uh, worldwide. Well, you take a whole vote on Facebook or Instagram, right? Today you can do amazing things. And Amazon helps with that. So I did that, and I chose two out of six. Um, uh, as, a, as a side note, I did choose the ones that were uh, – uh, the, the cheapest actually the cheapest I actually like them the most mm -hmm. the most comfortable and uh, the most kind of uh, pretty I actually ordered uh, $200 ones and they're not that comfortable anyways different mm -hmm. story yeah so two out of six I chose but the other four I sent back so when I sent it back whoever uh, you know made that sale actually uh, whatever sellers the, you know that was the inventory uh, when the unit comes back you pay a restocking fee and a return fee even though you haven't even made a sale because uh, only yeah only after I send the units back and uh, you know I sent the four and I kept the two only then Amazon charged my credit card for the two very right. interesting combination Amazon is doing it as a big push an effort right. uh, for the clothing category that they want to grow and basically kill all the other competitors you know if it's Macy's or Nordstrom or stuff like that they want to make it super amazing and comfortable to consume on Amazon or shop on Amazon for for fashion. It worked for me, and it work, it's working for many others. So if you sell uh, the, in the fashion category, um, the good news is, is that Amazon is trying to help you get more sales, and it will, because I actually kept two boots instead of one. Think about it. I ordered oh, yeah. six of them. I tried, and I liked two so much, and the pricing was comfortable. The, the, the price of one boot, I got actually two boots. So whoever you know sold me those two boots made a sale. So it's actually creating that growth and that prosperity inside Amazon. That's the good news. Uh, the not-so-good news is that you know sometimes you'll miss a sale. You're not going to get the sale. Right, uh, and you're gonna accrue all these fees, uh, but it's okay. Hopefully, you will make overall more sales. So it's more sales. So if your whole uh, sales, uh, you know, gross volume, you know, increase 10, 20, 30 percent, that's that that that's okay. And and then maybe you're you're paying all these uh, return fees, restocking fees uh, from all these sales that did not materialize. Um, do the math, do the balance. If you're on the upside, great. If you're not, um, right. maybe you should uh, maybe look into your pricing. Maybe uh, you sell the same amount, maybe even less volume, but you have more margins, so you're more profitable. Profitable. But uh, in terms of reimbursements, of course, any of the units that never received, uh, got received back into the fulfillment center, let's say the four boots that I sent back, one of them never reached back because, I don't know, the carrier missed it or lost it, whatever it is, whoever that seller is, get to make sure to find out and then get them a recovery because they need to get reimbursed for that. Amazing. And it's called Amazon Wardrobe. Is that what it's called? Amazon Prime Wardrobe. Yeah. And that's because available only from Prime members, I'm guessing. And is it all over the world or is it just in the U.S. right now? I, I shop in the U.S., so I can vouch for the U.S. I'm not sure uh -huh. uh, everywhere in the world. Um, but, yeah, because um, for Amazon Prime members, I think there's over 100 million of the Amazon Prime, Prime members, so hopefully uh, some of them are watching the show now. Uh, but if you're not a Prime member, I do recommend going Prime because uh, you get right. like a one-day yeah. one shipping, you get wardrobe. 
But for me, I like also the content. You know, I, Amazon just uh, announced that they uh, reached a, a big deal with the NFL, the National Football League. One of the Ooh. basically, yeah, it's the biggest, uh, you know, uh, most popular sport in America is uh, American football, and they reach a contract with them, and now they're gonna in year 2023 they're gonna have a Thursday night football and all these football games coming out. So that it's only included to the prime members. So you oh, get wow. television, live television. So Amazon is mm -hmm. in the live television business. Uh, I wonder if they're ever gonna get a chance to uh, actually air the Super Bowl, and that's gonna that actually, pro yeah, that might provide. I mean, this is like news, news, like the latest stuff I'm giving you here. Um, so if they're going to grow into this position of live sports events, it might give a interesting opening to Amazon sellers to advertise to those events and not only focus on PPC, focus on traditional, you know, television media instead of Amazon. I think Amazon's kind of pushing that way. So it'll be interesting to see how that grows. That's why also why I recommend prime. It's a whole nice ecosystem that I, I think, uh, it's very interesting to be in. Yeah, and I think since there's so much scope for growth, I think this is the right time for you to jump in and take the benefits that it will offer you in the future as well. So yeah, that, that was a great answer. Thank you, Yoni. I'm going to take some comment section now because I see that it's lightening up. Um, hi, Jesse. Thank you so much for returning back to our live. It's lovely having you here. And Jose says, Seller Speak Monday sounds so good. I would love to see you guys discuss about international selling on Amazon. If you really want to hear us talk about international selling on Amazon, we have an event coming up on 5th April. It's a five-day event, and it will teach you how you can expand to different marketplaces. We're covering marketplaces such as UK, UAE. UAE is such an upcoming market. I think it's going to be great for people. Um, there's Australia, there's Canada, and there's India. So you should definitely uh, look out for the registrations. They open soon, and it starts from April 5th. So look out for that. And thank you so much for being here, Jose. So I, I see a question from Matthew Johnson. Hi, Matthew. And the question is, hi, what would be an ideal late dispatch rate for a good Amazon seller? Um, Yoni, would you like to answer this? I think uh, dispatch is when you got to ship an order that comes in. So it's FBM mm -hmm. fulfilled by merchant. Um, so honestly, uh, Matthew, the best thing is to look. Each order will have its own uh, deadlines. So make sure yeah. every order you see the lead deadline and do not try to cross it. If you cross it, uh, it's not like a person is sitting on Amazon watching you. It's actually the computer, the inter artificial intel intelligence, and they will catch you if you're late. So uh, make sure to uh, you know be uh, intimately familiar with every order. Once again, go to the Amazon order, look into uh, ship date and deliver by date. Usually it's broken down to two components. Once again, ship date, they might tell you today, tomorrow, or next and the day afterwards. Uh, and then when did they expect this, um, this um, inventory or that order to, to uh, reach to the consumer? Uh, and, and if you're buying your shipping inside Amazon Sell Essential, it should give you uh, choices to, to make it on time. So it can be UPS, it could be a post office and stuff like that. So make sure to choose the one that will come on time. Uh, do not mess with the algorithm. Just be very religious about making sure to dis dispatch or ship your uh, Amazon uh, uh, orders that you fulfill yourself on time uh, and uh, all the time. You want to have a good score because, you know, you're going to get more um, more traction. Uh, it's it's always either you spiral up or you spiral down. If you play by the True. rules, you're going to go up. If you kind of trying to, you know, not not uh, follow them and uh, not pay attention to them, you can spiral down. Uh, that is why um, sellers, you know, many of them, I think most of them, probably more than 60% of them actually uh, um, choose the, the FBA option, the Fulfillment by True. Amazon option, because they don't have to do anything. They just ship it in bulk in one, one big batch into Amazon. Amazon receives it, and then as the orders come in, it's all about Amazon. Now, if Amazon or if FBA or the Fulfillment by Amazon Center uh, miss the deadline, that's up to them. Because if the c consumer is going to give you a negative feedback later, Amazon will strike it off say, this order was Fulfillment by Amazon, we take full responsibility, and that's not going to affect your matrix. So, uh, you know, Matthew, consider that. So if you uh, if you own the, the process, own it, be professional about it, uh, know every order, and don't really don't try to miss anything. If anything, be ahead of, ahead of the game. Just as soon as you get an order, right away package it. If you can ship it out, ship it out. If it's ready for the next day, make sure the next day it goes out. Uh, but uh, another option, like I mentioned, is, uh, you know, ship it to FBA, and then you have much less pressure on you, and most of the pressure is on Amazon. It's up to you to make sure that Amazon actually does their job right. Uh, in terms of shipping stuff on time, or if you got negative feedback, stuff like that. But of course, when you need to reconcile all the FBA issues, we can help with that. You know, if uh, they, you, you reconcile it and they find out that Amazon uh, missed something, that you're eligible to get paid or uh, reimbursed, that's where we can come in, and which makes it even easier again. You don't have to ship your yeah. stuff yourself. You give Amazon to ship it, and then you have other professionals looking into everything for you to make sure that you know you can just focus on creating the product, you know, generating, generating the sales, 
you know, doing the branding, doing the marketing, just to keep that fuel going. Uh, that's called, you know, creating sales, which creates a business. That was a great answer, Yoni. And again, late dispatch rate can also affect your ratings on Amazon and your overall account health as well. So you have to be very, very careful about it. And thank you so much for answering that question, Yoni. Let's take the next question. It's by Harry Jacob. Hi, Harry. Thank you so much for being here. I'm an Amazon FBA seller. If a customer has returned an item and it gets damaged on its way back to the Amazon warehouse, will I be able to get reimbursed? Yoni, take it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Hi, Harry. Thank you so much for this question. Uh, this is a great question. I'm going to get very, very specific with it, and I hope you understand. So uh, I'm just going to read it one more time to make sure I got the components correctly. Uh, you sell an FBA, the customer has returned it, or you basically wants to get a refund. Uh, as it shipped to Amazon, and Amazon received it in the warehouse, it got damaged. Yeah. Now, if it got damaged, there's two tracks, right? There's two tracks. One track if the customer damaged it, or if it wasn't the customer damage, it maybe it probably got damaged during in transit or maybe even Amazon's uh, fulfillment team. So I, I, I do this uh, specific uh, breaking down because uh, some of them you're eligible to get paid, some of them you're not. So just to get out of the way, if the customer or, or consumer damages your product, Amazon actually calls it damage by customer, it's not eligible for reimbursement. You're not going to get a reimbursement. This is just the name of the game on selling on Amazon. The customer is always right, even if they're wrong. I remember when I used to sell on Amazon, uh, I got a product back. It was chewed up by a dog. You see the, the bites of a dog like everywhere. Clearly, it was like butchered. It was not eligible for reimbursement, and that's what it is. Uh, but if the, the item got damaged during transit uh, and or by, by the fulfillment center, Amazon will have that indication or that code identifier. That you can identify that was damaged either by Amazon or in transit, uh, and you are eligible to get a reimbursement for that. So it's important to know what you're eligible for and what you're not eligible for. And of course, what you are eligible for to open a case for that and get yourself reimbursed. Once again, if it's too complicated, too much stuff, we can help with that. But if you want to do it yourself, that's, that's what's going on. Consumer uh, damage it, customer damage it, not eligible. If it's anything beyond that, it could be a transit carrier or the warehouse team, you are. So hopefully that helps. Thank you so much for answering that, Yoni. And uh, Harry, you can obviously contact Getida if you want more information and if you want more help on your item which was damaged. So I'm sure Yoni will be able to help you out with that as well. Thank you so much for answering that. Um, the next question is by William. And hi, William. Hello. Um, it is, is using automated uh, reimbursement services against Amazon's policy? Is there a risk of account suspension if we use such services? This is a very important question because that will tell you why Getida will, uh, is like an authentic service provider for you when it comes to Amazon reimbursements. Take it, Yoni. Got it. All right, William. Thank you so much. Great question. So, to just one second, I'm going to make a specific again about this. If you use anything that's automated, meaning robotic or robots filing claims and doing stuff automatically, that is against Amazon terms of service. And yes, that would not. That is not going to reflect well in your account. Uh, so you should probably stay away from these kind of you know solutions. Anything that's automated, automatic software, automatic machine, you should probably stay away from it. It's against uh, TOS Amazon terms of service. Getira, we're not a software. We're not automated. We're not robots. Is, you know, we're actual auditors and we have a dedicated team of humans that open cases on your, on your behalf and manages all the back and forth with Amazon. In addition to that, uh, we're authorized by Amazon in, in two places. First place is the Amazon App Store, right? Uh, so because uh, all the data, so that, this means we have a double commitment. We have a commitment to you, the seller, but also a commitment to Amazon. We're like Amazon sellers. We have to comply to the terms of service because we're authorized by them to uh, you know, provide the solution on the platform. In addition to uh, the App Store, we're also available on the SPN, on the Service Provider Network, because we provide a service. Once again, we're a technology company that creates a solution. Uh, to create a solution, we use uh, you know, software and technology in internally. But when we service you, the dedicated Amazon seller, we use humans, we open cases, we deal with all the back and forth. We're managing it you know, like it should be managed to make sure that you, know, you get everything that you're eligible to receive. But, and and it, we, Amazon understands what's going on, with the data that they're being provided to make it a smooth experience where they can really, uh, in the shortest time possible, approve. The Amazon wants to give you what's yours, but they don't want you to waste their time. They don't want you to bomb them with a lot, a lot of claims that you don't know what you're talking about and just wasting their the, the time of their staff. Yeah. Because at that same time, they can you know uh, service somebody that's maybe using a solution provider like us, where every time they get the information, they understand everything, they say, oh, we apologize, here's your reimbursement, let's move on. It saves them a lot of time and energy. And that's what they want. They want it to be uh, streamlined and efficient and dealt with the, by the the, the providers that just you know how to ha they know how to handle it in the best way so it's not wasting anybody's uh, 
time and resources. So um, this is a, this is a tip for you. If you want to get anything that's um, you know for Amazon, uh, you know business, uh, make sure they're authorized by Amazon. It's a good place to start. I'm not sure if you know this, but Amazon has invested four billion dollars in creating an app store on Sell Essential to make sure to authorize the solution providers on the platform to make sure that you know all the all the solution providers there are they know how to basically handle themselves properly in, in a in a way that Amazon can track and monitor and approve. Uh, so start looking there. If you if anybody comes in and offers you a solution and they're not on the app store, uh, you should probably think twice before you do it. You know, Amazon has created a whole platform for you to identify the ones that play by the rules, and because of that, you know, uh, your account is safe with them, and they're going to give you, you know, the, the best solution and uh, service possible uh, with full, uh, you know, responsibility and accountability. So I hope this helps uh, with this question. That was a great answer, Yoni, and I love how the same analogy can be used for reviews as well. Because I have seen people use review softwares, and they're just bombarding Amazon with claims which are which might not even be related to your review because these are um, automated softwares, right? So yes, thank you so much for that answer. It goes the same for the reviews. So talking about reviews again, Yoni, I'm gonna uh, take over for a little bit. Um, put you on the waiting room, right? You got it. You got it. So um, talking about reviews again, I have spoken about how you can get a negative review removed if the negative review was, um, you know, not related to your product or it was not true to your product. However, if the negative review is true to your product, what do you do then? So these, this is where things get complicated, right? This is where you have to be very careful in terms of approaching the situation. So you can obviously go and write to the customer who bought your product, send them an email saying that, hey, I am sorry that you had a bad experience and here's a $10 Amazon gift card. However, do not mention please remove your review or anything like that in the email because then Amazon is going to take actions against you. Just offer them a gift card, Be um, ask them how you can solve the problem and if they are not willing to um, accept anything from you and that's okay but you should do not bring up uh, like, you know, please remove the negative review. Here's a $10 gift card but that will not work. Also, um, there are so many different tactics that you can do to get um, a gift card or, or get a negative, uh, positive review. Wow, my brain is everywhere today. So yes, uh, there are other ways that you can um, get positive reviews on Amazon. If you have any more questions related to reviews, you can leave them here. And quick, uh, for those of you joining right now, if you have a negative review, I'm going to go over three things that you can do if the negative review is not true to your product, true, not true to your service, these are the three things that you can do to get those negative reviews um, removed. First, if the feedback includes personable, identifiable information, you can write to Amazon and they will remove it. Second, the entire feedback comment is a product review. Again, this is not true to a review um, that Amazon accepts. You can get that removed. And third, the entire feedback comment is regarding fulfillment or customer service for an audit that you didn't even fulfill. This was fulfilled by Amazon. So yes, you can get those negative reviews removed. Usually Amazon, um, if the order was FBA fulfilled, Amazon automatically removes the review as you only mentioned. Um, automatically, they don't even have to review it. You may not even have to file for it to get reviewed. So yeah, these are the three things that you can do right to Amazon. Make sure that your email is super short and not explaining the whole thing that happened. So do the same thing with reimbursements, by the way. Do not write the whole thing that happened. Stick to the point. And I'm sure Yoni will back me up here. Yoni, I'm getting you back on the screen now. Hello. <laughs> hmm. All right. So coming to our next topic, we are going to be talking about packaging and shipping. So Yoni, um, bulk items. Let's talk about bulk items. They charge a bunch when they you ship them. Is there any way if I am a seller fulfilled, if I'm an Amazon fulfilled seller, is there a way I can sh like save on my shipping cost if I'm selling, let's say, backdrops or like big stands? How do I um, tackle that? Yeah, it's uh, this is a an ongoing pain point for a lot of Amazon FBA sellers. It's the issues of um, when and dimensions because um, the larger and heavier Amazon uh, thinks or knows that your product is, the more they're going to charge you with fees. And in particular, uh, Amazon pick and pack fees. So let's say this is your product; it's a phone cover. Every time they pick it from the bin, they package it in a box, they ship it out. They're going to charge you a fee for that. They call it pick and pack fee. And this particular fee, if once again, if the larger and heavier Amazon thinks it is. The more they're going to charge you. Uh, so if you're, you know, if you're selling um, products that are heavy and long and and they're bulky, um, it might cost you a bundle. So it, it's up to you if you if you can to consider maybe uh, creating smaller types of packaging. Think creatively. 
for example, um, you might be selling a ball, right? Uh, and the ball, if it's inflated, it might reach uh, 20, 30 inches, and you can send it to Amazon this way because it's 30 inches. Every time Amazon picks it from the bin, packages in the box, ships it out, it might charge you $10, Right, because you're in the weight and dimension tier that it's higher than the the, the lowest but if you instead of sell, uh, sending in the ball inflated you just deflate it to the very very you know minimum and now it's maybe three inches you send it in they're only going to charge you two and a half dollars so by being creative and thinking about this issue you def you know de decompressed the the weight and dimensions of your product you shipped it in and now you're saving like seven and a half dollars every time you sold a unit you sold a thousand units that's seven thousand uh, five hundred dollars if you sold uh, 10,000 units, that's uh, $75,000. Uh, so on and on it goes as you build volume. So if you created your product and you didn't put the product research and everything like that because you focus more mainly on um, you know, the, 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 the rank that you're going to get, what's going to be the ACOS, the, the advertising, all that stuff, that's great. That's to generate the business and generate the, the revenue. But hopefully if you did already establish your, your revenue and your, your ranks and your listing, think – what you know look inside the wedding dimension see if you can reduce anything maybe uh, the materials that maybe you're you're, you're putting in a, your, your product in a cardboard box that maybe it's a whole pound maybe instead of uh, maybe use a, a different cardboard box where you know it's a half a pound or instead of cardboard maybe just shrink wrap or something like that where it's that doesn't even weigh anything it's just a few ounces uh, so whatever you can to reduce uh, the weight and dimension of your product packaging uh, you're gonna save a fortune so know your numbers know the tier that you're in you can just go to uh, Amazon Sell Essential on top right. There's a search box. You put uh, FBA Winning Dimensions, and right away you're gonna get the whole chart. So make sure you know where your product is in that chart. And of course, if it's in a high tier of, of fees, see what you know. Look inside. To, you know, check what you can do with your factory, with your you know whoever is your sourcing agent, to change things a little. Once again, if you uh, if if you um, actually if you did make any changes and you reduce the winning dimensions, don't expect Amazon to all of a sudden start charging you less. What you're going to have to do is open a case with them, okay, and achieve two things. Actually, achieve the main thing. The main thing will be update the wedding and dimensions information. So going forward, they're going to charge you less. That's when you start all the savings. But after a few weeks or a few months, if you see that Amazon, again, push your, your, your wedding dimension up and it starts to overcharge you, you should be able to get reimbursement for that. Uh, but it, it's limited to 90 days. So you should probably check every 90 days after you did the changes um, to make sure that they're not going back to the old wedding dimensions and start overcharging you. Because if they do, you're going to be able to get reimbursements for that. Uh, I see some sellers that struggle with that. They made the changes. Going forward, there's, the Amazon is supposed to charge them less. They do, but after a little while, they start charging them, uh, them the old fees. It can be because of returns. Probably, you know, mm -hmm. old, you know, consumers who bought a few months ago, they're returning it. Amazon gets it in. It's the bigger packaging or the heavier. So, oh, there it is. It's an opportunity to charge again more. But that, just like, that was like a onesie, right? And the, your new products already have a smaller packaging or a lighter packaging. So, you know, it can be a little bit of a turbulence when you set things in motion. Uh, just make sure to check it every 90 days because uh, you're going to get full recovery. You're going to get fully reimbursed for anything that they overcharge you. If you just do it once a year, uh, and let's say the Amazon overcharge you $10,000 for the year, and the last uh, 90 days they charge you $3,000, you are going to get $3,000 back. The other $7,000 will be gone forever. So to make sure, so if you do any changes, make sure to, um, after the changes, check it every 90 days. Um, that's, you know, uh, what sellers can consider doing uh, to reduce their uh, fulfillment fees with one of the dimensions. Well, I didn't even know most of the things that you've just mentioned. And this is amazing because I think I'm going to like um, give them tits bits of information when I come across this problem again. And if you want to know more about um, packaging and if you want to know about uh, more about shipping, we already did a session with Yoni uh, for our event Q4 Mastery, which was um, in back in Q4. So you can go watch that video again and you'll get so much of more insightful videos uh, and tips and information, of course. So we are going to take two last questions before ending this live. Um, so let's see. All right, so this is Jesse again. Hi, Jesse. I've read in multiple sources that including product inserts is a good way to ask your customers for rating and reviews. But it is a good. But is it is that a good strategy in 2021? Yes, it is still a good strategy in 2021. Uh, so you have to be very careful about your product inserts, yeah, especially when you're asking about reviews. So a good product, um, a good product insert can do two things for you, get reviews. Second, you can also cross promote your product. Um, Yuni, I'm gonna put you in the waiting room while I answer this question, yeah? Okay, so there are two things that you can do with your product inserts. You can um, make sure that you have get, you get more reviews and second, you can uh, make sure that you can cross promote your product. Do not promote your website, Amazon does not like that. 
So in a in your product inserts, you can mention that hey, uh, this is the coupon code for ten uh, percent off on your next purchase. You can use this coupon code on Amazon, and you can um, you know be like thank you for your purchase. Or you can go the other way around, and you can tell the um, buyer or the customer how you can leave an Amazon review. So be like thank you for the product, and you can leave your Amazon review here. Here are the steps that you can follow. So I will link a website down below which will help you understand what kind of product inserts is a good idea and which are not. So of course, if you have a product insert, you can also make it into coasters and send it with the package because that means that you are, you will have brand visibility uh, even when people are not using that product. So of course, if you're sending a coaster, a person's going to keep their cup on it and they'll continuously be reminded about the product that they purchased and about your brand. So that can lead to more sales in the future for you, and that also builds brand uh, loyalty. So yes, I hope I answered your question, Jesse. Uh, product inserts are a good idea. Make sure that they are not violating Amazon. So yes, that's all I had to say. Okay. So um, Jose has a question for you, Yoni. I'm gonna put you back on um, screen. So is there a possibility of Amazon overcharging for shipping by mistaking my product dimensions? Yes, of course. So um, I'm gonna give uh, two examples that I usually give uh, regarding this situation. So. Uh, every few weeks, every few months, you might find that the information of your product, uh, especially the weight and dimension, has been altered or has been changed. And then because of that, Amazon starts to overcharge you on your account. So uh, I'll give two simple examples that I usually use. One of them could be an honest mistake. Another one could be, be uh, maybe because uh, you're being under attack. I'm going to start with the honest mistake. So let's say the product that you're selling is a handbag. So uh, Amazon every few weeks or every few months will scan your product in their big machine that they call a cubic scan machine. And once they do, if let's say your product is a handbag, it's sitting on the machine and then it has a little strap hanging loose. And that strap is might be uh, adding another 10, 20, 30 inches to the weight and dimensions. So Amazon is going to capture that because it's noise in the data. And now the data is inflated. So now they're going to start overcharging you. It's an honest mistake. It can happen. Uh, so if you identify that, make sure that to fix it, to fix the weight and dimensions. And then get reimbursements for anything that they overcharge you because of that incorrect information. Uh, and another tip for that is uh, make sure w whatever you're sending to FBA, it's always minimized. So if you have a handbag, make sure it's uh, you know, maybe a shrink wrap with some bag or something like that so nothing can hang loose. Sending anything loose to FBA is not a good practice, so uh, hopefully this tip also helps out. Now the second example that I have uh, that maybe you're being under attacked is um, if I'm your competitor, I'm selling the same product that you're selling, and uh, you know we're competing on price and rank, everything. What I can do to you is I can take your ASIN, I can list it on my Amazon seller central account. I'm never going to offer this product. I'm never going to sell it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the weight and dimensions. I'm going to say uh, your product, instead of being you know, uh, 10 ounces, it's 100 ounces. Instead of being uh, 10 inches, it's 100 inches. And all of a sudden, this information is deflated. Amazon starts to use that information, and it starts to overcharge you and overcharge you and overcharge you every time you're making a sale. So we're you know, competing head to, head to head in sales. I'm making good margin, good profit. You're being basically overcharged with fees. So you're making less margins or even might be losing money. Uh, so we've, we've, in the past, we discovered this, these kind of elements. So it's good for sellers to be aware that you should, uh, one of the things you always should look into every 90 days is the weight and dimension uh, you know, uh, status that you have and how much Amazon is charging you with fees uh, to make sure they're charging you correctly with fees every 90 days because if they did overcharge you, you're going to get the money back. And if you don't, uh, it's going to be beyond 90 days. You're not going to be able to get it back. So a good professional seller, once a quarter, you hopefully you also do your books. You want to know how much you made in profit and loss. Uh, you want to kind of look into your um, catalog, inventory catalog, make sure everything's healthy, your listing, nothing's suppressed, nothing's stranded, all the fees are charging correctly. You know, sellers who kind of every quarter do the good checkup on their accounts, uh, it will, and, and, and the moment these find these issues, they can fix immediately as soon as possible. The healthier they're going to be, they're going to survive long term, and they're going to keep uh, having healthy profitability, uh, either, you know, and, and avoiding or – uh, uh, quickly addressing things on time uh, for honest mistakes that happen or if they ever got attacked. So hopefully, uh, jo Jose, right, Jose? Espec Jose. Esposito. Jose Esposito, I hope uh, uh, this uh, answer helps out with uh, uh, the question that you presented. Thank you so much for answering that, Yoni. And um, I was about to end the session, but I see there is a really good question now. So I'll take that question and we'll uh, come and I'll get you back on screen to talk about any discounts or a deal that Kitaira is running or something. So I'll put it back in the waiting room. 
Yeah, so the last question for today is very interesting that I would like to answer. Hey guys, great session. Thank you, Joseph. I was wondering, is Amazon Wine program a good alternative to early review program? Since Amazon decided to scrape the latter, should we accept something new from them? So yes, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning of the session, um, early review program is canceled by Amazon. And the only thing about wine program is that you need to be brand registered to enroll for it. Also, you need to, um, it's more of a risk. Uh, again, this is a personal opinion. So this is more like a risk that you're taking because in Amazon wine program, uh, you can get either a positive or a negative review. So if you're uh, confident about your product and you know that there are going to be no complaints, so go ahead and get registered for Amazon wine program and then you, um, can take benefits from it. However, I recently had a session with Marshall and he said that Amazon wine programs are the people who are giving reviews are not gods. So they have a specific amount of uh, positive reviews that, in, that they can give that are five stars and they have to give out some negative reviews as well. So sometimes they overlook some things and your product, no matter however good that your product is, can end up with a uh, one star because just because they did not do their job well. So again, it's a task and it's um, it's a gamble. I would say it's a risk. If you're willing to take, you should do that. Also, there are some um, there are some requirements for you to register for Amazon Wine Program. So you can go check out our video that we did on it, and they will tell you everything that you need to know about it. And yes, I hope I answered your question, Joseph. And we can hopefully see something new from them, which is more inclusive of not only brand registered, but for all Amazon sellers. And let's see what Amazon does because Amazon is all about innovation. They're coming out with so many new things. As you only mentioned, I didn't even know about NFL and them partnering up with NFL. So yes, there's so many new things happening on Amazon and reviews can be one of them. So let's hope for the best. And Yoni, I am getting you back on screen now. Hello. So um, Burnett, says uh thank you for this content thank you so much for being here bernard it means a lot of us uh, it means a lot to us that supporters like you come to our lives and uh, listen to us and you know get useful information so if you like this make sure to like the like button and we will keep continue making videos for you all so before ending the session yoni do we have any coupon codes or discount that Gitaida or people who are looking at Gitaida right now and are convinced that Gitaida is the only way that they can get reimbursements and take that load off their head. What do you think? What any discount? Yeah, yeah, we definitely. We we did uh, prepare a four hundred dollar offer for them. Uh, the only question is, Ria, can I share my screen? I can show them. If not, I'll just tell it to them verbally. You can you think totally I can be share your screen. Go ahead. I don't see the button. That's the only reason I'm asked. Uh, is there a button that I can use? I'm not sure. I see it. Oh yeah, there is. Um, there you will see a share screen button. It has a red line on it, but you will be allowed to share your screen anyhow. Yeah. yeah, I don't see it anyways, but okay, I'll just say no worries, guys. So uh, <laughs> anybody can, uh, sorry, yeah, I don't see the, I, I saw That's it in the beginning. Right. I don't know where I went to. Uh, so I don't want to take too much uh, time of, uh, of the crowd. All right, so anybody that visits, uh, you know, visits getita.com or getidea.com, uh, the first $400, that we, sorry, let's do this. The first $400 that we're going to get for you in FBA reimbursements will be free. We're not going to charge you a penny. Uh, Getita, we're, we're not a subscription. You know, uh, there's no contract. It's free to join. Anybody can join at any given time. You know, you don't, you can always uh, cancel the service. Uh, we only charge a fee from the recovery. We charge 25% fee. So let's say we got you $100 back you never had before. Uh, with 25% from the $100, it will be $25. Uh, but uh, that's just to join. But of course, if you already join, um, you can use this coupon code. It's uh, SAP400. S is for seller. AP is for app. 400, uh, the, uh, which means the first, the first $400 we're going to get for you in FBA reimbursements will be free. We're not going to charge you a penny. So no matter what, you're going to have $400 extra in your pocket. If you like the environment, if you like the value, you want to stay, by all means, you're welcome to stay. But even after, if you got your uh, $400 you want to leave, that's fine as well. We're here to help. Um, you know, we are the largest organization in the world dedicated just for Amazon FBA auditing and reimbursement. So you have a full commitment that we're going to basically work for you day and night to make sure that you always get the maximum. Uh, so you can really focus on the growth and the future. We're going to be more like archaeologists. We're going to focus on the past. We're going to come with little toothbrushes and uh, we're going to dust the sand. And only if we find a uh, golden coin for you, we're going to share it with you. Um, and that's it. Ping Pong Payment, shout out. Thank you so much. Uh, Ping Pong, I don't know if this is Ryan watching, but if it is, uh, shout out uh, to my friend. Uh, but that's it. This is a $400 opportunity. So, you know, hopefully it's going to be helpful. Um, but thank you so much. I enjoyed it uh, you know, so much today. Yeah, thank you so much for being here, Yoni. Uh, and Seller App offers a seven day free trial. We have recently launched our keyword research tool and PPC tool for in more than eight countries. Go check that out. We did a live launch. It was super exciting and I would love for you to go 
um, play around with the demo data. We do give demo data so you don't have to connect your accounts. And you can see for yourself how we can help. And I'm sure that you are not going to be disappointed. So thank you so much for being here, Yoni. Thank you so much for being here, Manie. And whoever joined to watch us talk about all things Amazon. So I'm Ria Mittal, and this is Yoni Mazor. And we will see you all later. Bye-bye.